wants to uh, review it. Uh, but bottom line, if you have any questions that's not on this list, uh, we'll be glad to um, go over that. I'm just going to drag it over to one of my other monitors so I can kind of keep on track and and go. Uh, this is for sales, so I am going to concentrate on the sales department. So uh, um, uh, let me do that. So right now I'm in the MBY account, but if I need to hop to somebody else's account, um, please let me know and we will um, hop to anybody's account that we need to. So um, I guess the first thing, I guess what I'm gonna do is go through how to enter somebody in, how to add the opportunity to the contact, how to schedule follow-up, uh, just through a, through a normal data entry. And uh, that should hopefully uh, perk some questions on that. Uh, for you, I, I'm assuming most of you seen this already. We have a total of five managers. We have a way for you to manage your uh, opportunities or what people, people are looking for. We have a, a manager dedicated to your web leads. So whatever web leads you've been getting in or assigned to you would be in the lead manager, the contact manager. Again, this is people that you've contacted uh, that are in the database and then your activity manager. And the home manager uh, is just a compilation or can be a compilation of, uh, of what you're looking for. So actually, let me start out with that and then I'll go to the contact entry. So let's go to um, contacts. So in contacts, uh, up here on this left-hand side, if you've not played with it all yet, uh, what you're looking at is filters. So right now I'm logged in and I'm seeing all the people that are my current location, uh, all owners. Now you don't want that one. You would want the me. Uh, me would mean current, current, current person logged on, uh, but then all the different types. I don't care if they're active or inactive. I just want to see all my contacts. And then up here is where you would actually, and actually it's here already. You click on it. So my contacts is there. Now I'm logged on as IDS admin, so I don't have any contacts. Let me go and impersonate uh, Craig. And then I'll use this view. My contacts and Craig doesn't have that view. So one second, let me go back to me. And uh, the reason Craig doesn't have that view is not shared. So, and how do I know that? Because that's put black instead of red. So I'm gonna share my contacts. And now it's red. So now when I go to Craig, oh, yeah. Craig is going to now have the my contacts view. Or actually everybody at the MB location. Uh, so Craig doesn't have a lot, so let's pick somebody else. I'll just kind of go down the line and see uh, Brianna. She has quite a few there. And we'll use her. OK, um, so this is again. Which why you're seeing Brianna is because uh, if you have security, you have the right to impersonate somebody. So right now I'm impersonating that person and I'm looking at all locations where I, or in this case, Brenna, is the owner of the contact. And again, whatever um, um, status they may be. So most salespeople like that, uh, that view, when it was created, who's the owner, what they're looking for. And interested in is a very good field to look at because this means all these contacts that are owned by her, she's also created an opportunity because interested in is coming from the opportunity. If she did not have an opportunity, then all of these would be blank. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, so the my contact view is a good view. And opportunities, let's hop on down there for a second and see what uh, Brianna has in that. And I don't see a, a, these two asterisk, by the way, these are things that I created and that's based on what salespeople like. So I'm gonna go back to me for a second and for somehow it got unshared so click on me and here is this my opportunities actually i'll go through and knock these out real quick so the standard my opportunities i'm sharing let me go to uh leads and i'm going to go to the one that says my open leads and that is shared so we're good there and i'm going to go to activities 
And my fault today looks like it was. Let's check it real quick. And there it's good. Okay, good. Okay. So um, um, as a per as a salesperson, and I'll go ahead and impersonate Brianna again. So she can use the view. These are called views. And the asterisk asterisk again, those two asterisks are just an easy way for me to designate which ones I created. You can create your own um, as you want to. This is easy for me to know which ones I did. So my opportunities again is showing is it hot, warm, cold? If she used that field, opportunity name, who ownership, when it's created, who the contact is, if she lost a deal, the type of unit. I'll kind of take the elevator or the escalator to the right. Uh, customer number, original lead, was it closed? Who last modified it? Modified date created by trade comments, uh, trade model, trade unit type, trade year, price, but all the different fields that you can look at. Uh, just use the scroll bar at the bottom. And this is basically what you're working. Uh, and you can always sort this. If I click on created date, uh, it shows the oldest to the newest. If I click on created a date, it puts the newest on top. So it's not an uplog for uh, this salesperson, but it's the order that these were created. So that's kind of a good thing. Um, and again, uh, to recap or not recap, but just to say it again, this is the filters. I'm seeing all locate all opportunities at all location where she is the owner for the sales department and they're open. Um, so that's that view. And actually, I'm, I'm going to go right up. So leads. So when she clicks on leads and she uses the one again, or the two asterisks, my open leads, same premise, all location at all locations uh, where she is the owner of the lead sales department, open leads. That's what she's seeing. Same functionality. Uh, if I click on created on, I'll see the oldest on top. I click on created again. I see the newest or latest on top. Um, and then owner name and so forth on the lead. And this right here just lets you, all of these were automatically imported. So Jen Phillips uh, evidently went to websites and submitted two forms. And that's an audio, IDS auto import means that when she hits submit, it went right from your website right into IDS. Um, so that one's good. And then contacts, uh, we've already kind of covered that. You should draw your contacts. And then activities. And let me go to my activities. And I could have swore, oh, right there. My follow-ups due today. Um, now on this, that's kind of a ambiguous, not ambiguous. Um, some salespeople like that, but you might say, you know what? I want to see all the ones due in the next three days or seven days. Hit that, and you would see all your faults due in the next seven days, or you want to see all your faults due in the next 30 days, 90 days. So even though this starts out with being due, due, uh, you can change the filter here and just hit the search button again, and then search by whatever date range that you want to um, search by. And last but not least, a home screen. And I actually want to build this so you kind of understand where it came from. So you have the default view. And uh, so I'm going to create one called. And what I'm doing, you can do. Uh, my home screen. Hit my home screen, hit save. Now I just made a duplicate of what was there. But now I'm going to get rid of what's all these up here. So I'm just hitting the X in the upper right hand corner. So I want to redo everything. So all those views you just saw me go through, they're in this drop down. So I want to see my open opportunities in my home screen, my default screen when I log in. Now I just hit add and it shows up. And let me add Janie. Uh, I want to see uh, my open leads. I want to see my follow up to do in the today. And I want to see, so hopefully you're seeing, I'm picking these from the different managers. So they have to be the different managers first, and then they're here. At that point, you have the choice of what is basically important to you. Um, if you want your follow-ups to do on that left-hand corner, I'm just grabbing 
the title bar and moving it there. And that's actually how I would do it. So I'd have my follow ups here, my open web leads over here, my open open opportunities here and my contact log, so to speak, right here. At this point, uh, this will be on your monitor. So I'm going to size this for mine. It looks OK on yours. But I'm just moving my mouse to a double head like this. And now I'm going to drag down. About halfway. And then I come down here to a double heads and I'll drag down again. So I'm just fitting this to my monitor. And again, you can move these around to whatever position you want to. And I'll do the same thing on this side. Make it look neat. So. And um, and make it look neat. And I hit save. And all that I did to create this is uh, gave it a new name. And if you want to create your own, like what I would suggest to, to Brianna is for to come in here and instead of two asterisks. Um, I am one second. I am in a training. Double five. OK. Um, so what I would suggest to her and to you is to come up here, remove those two little asterisks. Put in VR there. And that way she can easily see it's something she created. And then, then again, hit the save. Now, when I change that name, I didn't delete the other one. The other one is still sitting there. If I go to the one that was there before, it's the same one. And of course, now she goes to hers. Uh, it's the same one. All that we did was change the name. Um, um, and created a new screen, uh, however you want to create it. So to me, this is a very good startup. This is all your follow ups that you schedule. This is your web leads. This is your opportunities and this is your contacts. So now with that being said, I'm going to go through the process. You have a couple come in and uh, we're going to go ahead and create contacts and opportunities and uh, go through the whole process. If anyone has any questions that um, spawn off of that, please interrupt me. And uh, the Artivus boardroom has their hand raised. Did you mean to do that or did you? Accidentally hit the uh, raise hand. Yeah, no, sorry, we no. didn't mean to do that. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, uh, new contact. So the first step, you have John and Susan and the two kids in front of you, and the first uh, thing is to go is to contacts. And in this instance, when you go to contacts, you're going to want to search all. You want to see if John and Susan are at any of your location. You don't care where they're at. So all locations and here you would change this to all. And the difference, just so you know, the difference between all and all with owner, when a salesperson creates a customer, it automatically flags them as the owner of the contact. When accounting or parts or service create a customer, there is no contact owner. They don't, they're not using, they're not, it's not a CRM function within the work order or part sale. So in this instance, I want to see if this customer, I don't care who they entered, parts, service, accounting. So I don't care all, I don't care just about owners. I want to search all departments. Uh, here, I want to, all statuses. If they're in the system, I don't care what status. I just want to know if they're in the system. And then I'll come down here and I'll type in the name. Um, now I accidentally did lowercase. It doesn't matter. You can do uppercase or lowercase, but a good habit is get into is type in uppercase. Uh, I hit the group. Now you do have two choices. Do I want to search for the group within the last name or do I want it to start with? I would want it to who it starts with. Again, these are all filters. Every time you look at any of these grids, this side of the grid is a filter. Show me all locations, all owners, all statuses where the last name starts with the group. And I hit search. And I come down, look at it. Now, in this instance, I only have one page. So it's not a uh, a big deal, but let's say this brought back more than one page. You could actually come over here and type in the letter A, like his name's Ari DeGroot, and then you hit search again, and then you'd only see the DeGroots with an A in front of it. 
So again, I didn't really need to do that because the, the first name only bought back one uh, uh, 14 people. So it's easy to see our crew is not there. But if you have five or 600 or, or whatever, a lot, then just kind of put the first name in there. And this starts with applies to both of those. Um, obviously, email would be probably the best definitive uh, email or uh, search criteria, but we don't really search by um, uh, email too much. Um, it just, but at bottom line, that would be unique. So phone number, you never know what you got. You might have got the cell, you might have got the home, you got got the work. So that's kind of an ambiguous one. So generally speaking, the last name is the default. So I've determined that RA Recruit is not your system, and I click on the action and I click on new contact. I want to create him. So Ari and his wife are in the system. So when you click on new contact, uh, that will bring up the contact screen and you just kind of follow the Marybrook Road. As a note, these little red items, if you didn't know it, mean they're required fields, but don't get upset yet. Uh, they're not all, let me show you what I mean by required. So I'm clicking in the first name. I'm topic, topping in Ari. And as a note, I said, do everything in uppercase. Anywhere this prints, Anywhere this data, when may go into an email, that data will be proper cased. In other words, his name will come out uppercase A, lowercase R, I, E. Uh, it just looks better if everybody does the same. Otherwise, you'd have some salespeople putting uppercase, some people looking lowercase, and some doing proper case. If everybody does uppercase, then when you look at reports or data, it looks a lot more organized. Uh, so I type root. Now, watch what happens to this uh, required field when I hit tab. It goes away. I satisfied uh, that requirement. I gave it to him. Uh, greet as uh, is the uh, name, or sorry, the way to address this family in an email or a letter, the informal way to greet this customer in an email or letter. So I would put it here, Ari and Virginia. Go ahead. Uh, and again, uh, you do it all uppercase. Now, why did I use the ampersand instead of A-N-D? Because the system will automatically uh, proper case the letters. And if you put the word and in there, then it would come out Ari and Virginia, but the A and and would be capitalized and N-D would be lowercase and it just would look dumb. So if you use it this way, it won't look dumb. Um, over here, entity the name. Uh, Ari says, hey, if I buy from you, I'm going to want this not title in my name, but my company name. I want the, my, my title to be ABC Motor Cars. I want this to be titled into Groot LLC. So if he has, uh, he wants a personal titling done, if he buys from you, then put that in there. Um, but also, well, work with your, your F&I partner, what, what they want put in there. But that's what this is. entity name is if he wants it titled in a name different than his um uh, his name. Uh, okay, go up here to address. Now you see a lot of fields all required. And what the system's basically saying is we need, or the system needs one way to save this contact. Sorry, one way to contact this contact, or you can't save it. And right now it doesn't know what that way is. So let me kind of go right down here to address. So if I put into group, uh, gmail.com, And I hit the minimize. And I hit tab, I'm sorry. When I hit tab, most of these, well, actually all of these will go away. Because I gave the system one way to contact them. So once you have that, um, I am in. Uh, spelling. Um, so yeah, I, I gave it just one way to do it. So let me go ahead and backfill the other ones just to show you how they work. So one, two, three, Main Street. I'm gonna hit tab and I did it lowercase again. And when I hit tab, it will take me to address line two. Address line two is for the apartment or um, um, post, post, post office box. Now when I hit tab again, it's actually going to drop me down to. Um, let me open up this screen. I don't know y'all zip codes up there very well, so I want to type one of your zip codes. So when I hit tab, it's actually not going to take me to city. It's going to take me down to zip code. 
And if you type in a valid zip code, so E L oh, E two L space four A five. If you type in a valid postal code and hit tab, it will find what uh, uh, province and what NB and Canada. Um, and if you type in an American 29680, it would do the same thing. OK, uh, down here uh, you have your three different phone numbers and we've been in the habit as salespeople to whatever they give us, always put it in the home phone field. But now that our system, we actually we uh, can. I'm not sure if you guys have connect or not, but we do have two texting applications that we partnered with and they look those two applications look to the cell phone field. So all I'm trying to say is this, if whatever the number phone number the customer gives you, put it in the right spot. If it's a home phone, put it in the home phone. If it's a cell phone, don't put it in the home phone or the work phone, put it in the cell phone. So put this phone number in the proper whatever it is. And that way, whatever application that we develop um, for you, uh, will be able to predict, yes, go to this field to get a cell phone. I'm not there. The connect is not going to go to the home phone to pick up a cell phone field. Uh, down here, uh, spouse, this is just as a note. This is not the co buyer. This is the um, spouse, so put the spouse in there. Co buyer would be added within the. Um, um, sales quote. And I got Robin and all right. Evidently, I have somebody helping me. If somebody's admitting these people, good. Um, if you're kind of a geek and you wanted to do this, you could say, hey, Ari and DeGroot or Ari, Ari, Ari in Virginia. Hey, can I take it? And they're, they're leaving. And uh, you say, can I take a picture of you uh, before you leave? So you get your cell phone out and you take their picture. And then you come back in and you have your camera and you put, attach it to your computer. This little navigation unit, I hit the plus sign, it's going to go to my computer. And my computer in this instance is your server. And I don't think you have any pictures on your server. I actually should have loaded one. But anyway, if you found a picture on your server, you don't even have one on your desktop. No pictures, bummer. Okay. But anyway, if you had a picture and you clicked on open, then their picture would be right here. And this is kind of a handy feature to know uh, who you're who you're dealing with. And it's kind of nice if you had a picture of the family and little Johnny had a broken arm. And when you called back in six months and you pulled him up, your contact up and you saw that and you said, hey, by the way, how's Johnny's arm? You would be very impressive that you knew that um, um, his arm had a problem with it. Uh, over here, by the way, so far you notice I haven't entered in anything about what uh, Ari to group wants. This is the contact screen. Now I'm going to click over here to comments, and uh, this is um, however you wish to use it. I'm going to tell you the suggested way to use it, and I would do this in proper case because you're talking to yourself here. Uh, has three grandchildren. Wants to travel. Personal items about the person. The opportunity screen has uh, what they're looking for, also has a comment screen. Uh, and that's where I would put comments. Wants a second AC, wants it to be gen prepped, wants a um, um, 50 amp service uh, for future needs, something like that. But here in the comments on the contact, I would just put personal stuff in here. So with that being said, and again, if anybody has questions while I'm doing this, uh, just unmute yourself and the way to unmute yourself is hold your control key, hit the space bar and the way to remove then to remove remute yourself. You would do the same thing. Control space bar and then mute again. So if you have any questions, feel free to interrupt me and uh, we'll go from there. OK, so I uh, I have my contact in. And I hit save and at this time it's going to assign it a contact number. And right now, I'm not going to schedule any follow ups because I haven't created my contact yet. So I'm just going to click OK and not select any schedules. And right now, this is customer number 3105. This is his email address. This is his phone number. This is the mailing address. And these are actually shortcuts, uh, which will get more into activity. But let me show you one. It already says call on Friday. So I'm going to click on the phone number and uh, I'll just type in already said call Friday. 
or whatever your note is. You come down here and you put tomorrow there. And he says call at uh, a certain time. If he says call at a certain time, then I put the certain time in there. If he doesn't say call at a certain time, I put 5 p.m. in there and then just call him before the end of the day. Again, how you want to fill that out, but subject is a note to yourself and obviously due date and date is a time that you should do whatever you feel you need to do. Uh, but you notice there's no opportunity here and that's because I haven't created it yet. So I wanted to show that to you that those shortcuts, I like them very much. They're sitting right there. I can send them an email real quick. I can do a phone call, but let me get uh, fully filled out and then we'll start creating those. One final note before we leave this screen, uh, if you click on his customer number, uh, this will actually bring up a, what we call a customer maintenance screen. And this is where you can put birth dates. Come on, baby. Thank you. Uh, this is where you can put in birth dates. Um, uh, I had told Mark, yeah, I'm not sure if you'll be doing this walkthrough. Um, in fact, I'm quite sure you won't be. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I got a bit busy this morning. So yeah, it, it's going to happen at another time, but I don't think it's going to happen today. Okay. 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 How's um, that? All right, that's good. Now, uh, something that's not on the board yet that came about last night is there is a. Hey, uh, Jen, mute your uh, mute your thing there. That is going out Saturday. Right. There's a couple dates moved around, so the robe is on the board for Saturday. Boy, the robe got just moved. That got moved, and in place of that is the. Jennifer, um, mute your computer, please. I just did. <laughs> okay, so uh, what I did is uh, kind of, if you missed it, I clicked on the customer number. This brought up the customer maintenance screen. And the customer maintenance screen is a good screen. Uh, you have birthday, you have age, driver's license, whatever else you need to fill out about this customer. Uh, entity name, some of the fields are the same. The address is the same. Um, spouse information, if you feel you need to fill this out, uh, fill it out. At this point, you probably don't. Uh, employment, bank and mortgage, miscellaneous, uh, customer purchase history. Everything, of course, he's just put in the system, so it wouldn't be here. But uh, the customer maintenance screen is kind of the details. Uh, this is the main contact thing and for follow ups, but feel free at any time. Click on the customer number. And wait for it. And fill out any of these fields uh, that you choose when you hit save. They're now saved with your contact. OK. Um, OK, now I, I know who they are. And now I want to add my opportunity to my contact. And to add an opportunity, you go to action and you click on add opportunity. And I'll try to minimize that. You guys have lots of people who want to get on your system. So we have the opportunity. Now I actually did, and let me pull it up for you, um, is the searchable fields for, um, and I'm going to send this to Dwayne. And when it changes, uh, let me drag it over a little bit. So you can kind of see both at the same time, I hope. Yeah, there you go. So I'm going to drag that over just a bit more and now I'm going to bring it down a little bit. So all these fields, as I keep clicking here, can we drag down and try to show them to you as you look at them? And OK, uh, like the op everything I highlighted in the yellow is searchable. So if I want to, whatever I put in an opportunity name, I can search for it six months from now. Whatever I put in a source description, I can search for that six months from now. Whatever I put in unit brand and model, I can search. So if I type like this one says, hopefully you can see it, but like model says 1860 SS, I can search for it. So bottom line, I'm going to send this to Dwayne and then Dwayne can forward it to the sales staff. But everything highlighted in yellow, six months from now, a year from now, if you type that information in, like you type in EcoBoost, you will find the opportunity where you typed in the word EcoBoost. So let me put that in here and type in uh, the couple of people want a couple's trailer. They have uh, no kids yet or they're empty nesters, however you want to say. You could put couple's trailer, um, but you could make a lot of mistakes spelling there. I'm pretty sure I would probably, if I would couples trailer, I would put in CTT. And that way, six months from now, I just search CTT. 
they want to be, um, uh, they're looking at a 25 RK. Now, do you need to put in Forest River vibe? Well, not if 25 RK is the only, is if, it, if that is a vibe, if a couple three models, uh, uh, a couple three brands were, um, had 25 RK, then you may want to go ahead and just put in vibe 25 RK. And realize that the opportunity screen uh, is a work in progress. You might have five models up here today, and then after three days of talking to the customer, you'll have one model. Then two days later, he brings something else and you go back to three models. So this, everything on the screen will change during your working with the customer. Uh, so the vibe, uh, they want an award, uh, 23RK, they want to be under uh, $25,000. Uh, and all of these, I call this, it's, all, it's called the opportunity name, but a couple of, some salespeople call it the keyword search. Um, this is a very easy way of, if I type in CTT, I'm going to find every single customer that wants a couple's trailer because I put CTT. If I type in a Vibe 25RK, uh, then I'm going to find all the customers that at some point we're looking for a Vibe 25RK. So this truly does a lot of the heavy lifting in searching for whatever uh, they're looking for. But again, realize it's a work in progress. You will change this many times. As, as a you'll change this as the customer changes. Uh, you'll keep it going that way. Okay, over here, uh, they are required. And by the way, if you can look here, all your required fields are sitting down here. And as you satisfy them, they will be, uh, they will disappear. Like it doesn't know I put the opportunity name, but when I hit tab, opportunity name will go away because I gave it an opportunity name. So a source, uh, so they're walking, and they came in because of your dealership website. Um, they are a phone up. And they called you because of the dealership website. So what marketing or what your dealerships are looking for is how much traffic is coming from phone and then what where's that traffic coming from or how much traffic is coming from what or shows. And then how many came to the be the British Columbia. I'm assuming that's British Columbia uh, 2016 show. So this is how you can help them market to different areas that will bring you more sales. That's, that's the whole purpose of it. Uh, so I'll do phone up and I'll just do, they went to your website, they found something, they called you. So that's your kind of the preliminary items for the uh, opportunity to have up here. And now down here, what are they looking for? So I have a couple of trailers there, so they must be looking for a travel trailer. And you can fill in as much or little as you want. And I'm going to actually see if you carry the vibe. And yes, you do. All right. That's what I have. I love it. And you have the 25 RK. All right. Um, so bottom line, hopefully these are all just standard things. They want new, they want used or consignment, but it's kind of, they, most people want new, but if they found a darn good used one for $5,000 less, they want it. So I would recommend just leaving those blank. Totally up to you. Uh, year 2018 to 2019, you have to do both sides of the coin. You can't put 2018 here and nothing over here. It demands both. But the cool part, I think, is that uh, I put in this criteria. I'm going to see if I have any of these in stock. So I click on search inventory and it's going to use this criteria. It's going to default. It's going to look for travel trailers by 25 RK and it didn't find any. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the 25. Okay, do you have any vibes in stock? So I leave it travel trailer, I leave it vibe, I hit search, and you have one vibe, and it is a 22 rear bed, rear bath, I'm sorry. Um, and again, okay, that's not good enough. I want to see all, um, all my four, all my travel trailers. And that's all the travel trailers in there. And, uh, so I would spend a good half hour playing with this in here. Uh, currently, I'm only seeing the units for MBY because that's the location I'm logged into. But if you wanted to see, actually, let me go back to Vibe again. Um, I 
I spelled it wrong. Oh, Viv, it was looking for the code. Okay, so I'm going to hit search again. So I found one, but that's at MBY. I wonder if anybody else has any vibes. So I'm going to actually just get rid of MBY totally and leave this field blank. And by leaving blank, when I hit search again, it now it's going to search all locations. And you know which location is that because it's sitting up here. Um, a couple. Work a couple out. Boss, you got to come to my office. You got to come to my office. Okay. Let me go ahead and mute Caleb. And again, if anybody needs to unmute themselves, just go ahead and hit the. Uh, there we go. Okay. Um, a couple things here. If you are interested in it, you say, you know what, this customer, and again, I don't have to do it because I only have one screen, but let's say I only want to see trailers from 40,000 to 50,000. And of course you have, what I'm showing you have about a few of them up here that are more than that. And so now, uh, no stock units that match your thing. 40,000 to 50,000. Try it again. And 50 is right. Well, I love when it gets embarrassed. I 40 comma. No, that's not it. Well, I am stumped, but I can get that corrected. What that should have done is eliminated all of these other than this um, $33,000 one. Um, so I don't know, but I will fix that. Um, other than that, uh, what you can do is you can sort it. So if I click on age, I can see the oldest. Oh, let me get rid of that. Did I capture those again. Search. I can sort it. So if I click on age, I'll see the oldest on top to the, the earliest. If I click on it again, again, it's a separate. I want to click at my model, click at my model, and then I see all the models in order or year or whatever you want. So every one of these headers up here, you can search by, or sorry, you can sort what you want. So let's go ahead and say the uh, 25RK is the one they want. So you copy that stop number. You close that screen and then you just come right here and you paste it in there and it will put all the fine line details. Now, this unit, you can still create an opportunity, but this unit is sold available. How do I know that? Because it says SA here, but that's what they want. And um, uh, you can't, you can take a backup deposit on this. You can create a quote on this, but it will be in a backup. Somebody else has already taken a deposit, which took this off the market, but you can still create a quote on it. Um, so that's the interested information uh, right here, and we'll just drop down and uh, drop down here to additional information. What the estimate closing date is, is when they're going to pull the trigger, when they're going to do something. So these customers said they're going to buy by the end of the month. So you put the end of the month um, over here. What are they going to end up spending? I, I, I would use round numbers here. They're going to end up spending $25,000. Um, I'd put 25,000, I would put, don't put $25,488.32. That's, uh, um, I just put round numbers. Uh, stage, where did you leave it with them? After they left, okay, we're right on the right unit. It's just a meet and greet. We did an interview. So, and feel free, I would get with your store, your sales managers and make sure that all of these stages are appropriate for your dealership. Um, these look like all the default ones, which do work well but maybe you guys don't have a uh, meet and greet stage or an interview stage or a qualification stage. So I would, uh, any, if there's any sales managers on the call, I would pare this down to just what um, is normal. When you ask your salespeople, hey, John, where did you leave with those people? And they, the answer they give you, that's the answers we're looking for here. Well, that's the answers you're looking for here. So I would get this down to how you guys talk and so that way they're meaningful to the salesman. So I'll put, um, I'm actively working the guy. Oh, right, game a quote, because we'll be creating a quote. Uh, over here, uh, what is the best practice to how, how to flag or categorize your opportunities? Uh, I've been using this same categorization for a while now, and it's worked out very well. 
you flag the customer hot if they're going to buy, if you feel that they're going to buy in the next two weeks. If you flag the customer warm, if they're going to buy this month or within 30 days. And you flag them cold if they're not going to buy, uh, they're outside those two ranges. The beauty of this, and let me kind of hop back to um, what she's looking at, is that opportunities here. She has all these opportunities here, but let me just go ahead and flag this one here hot and then I'll change it back so I don't mess her data up. But the beauty of doing that is. And hit save. And now get rid of that one and go back. And now hit search. And. OK, um, one more time, I'll do it on green. I forgot the name of the other customer I did it on, so I'm just going to do another one. And this is owned by Brianna. I'm making this Shelly Green opportunity hot. I am close. What's missing? Oh, uh, I will pick a travel trailer and I'll hit save. And I will close it. Show this way. I'll remember it. Shelly Green. And I'll hit refresh. All right, I got a couple of challenges to do. Uh, you should have seen the word hot here. And that way, uh, Shelly could come here and select hot and just see the two or three that she flagged as hot. So I don't know why hot's not showing there. Let me hit refresh one more time. And it's certainly not. So I will I will get that fixed. Um, so that's that's the reasoning behind these hot, warm, cold, and that will mean something to you when you have a couple, three hundred opportunities here. You can easily lose your people very quickly, but if you mark only the people that are buying in the next two weeks as hot, then at any time you just come up here and click hot, and then you'll just see those three people, just those four people, in a very quick search. Let me do this one actually, and hit hot. There you go. Um, I, I will get it appearing here. You can use this filter, but this filter works very nicely down here too. So Shelly Green is there. So that's how you can quickly see it. So if you have 150 opportunities and you say, I just want to see my hot ones, or I just want to see my warm ones, then very quickly out of those hundred, you have three, or out of those hundred, you have two or whatever that may be. But that's the thinking behind that field here. Um, and I don't know why I mark him hot, warm, I'm gonna mark him hot. OK, trade. Hopefully this is fairly self-evident. 2015 and uh, and I want to do this. So you see it. So right now this is a drop down table. Uh, and you can either say it's a car there of SUV they're trading in. You can select other here and that way you assume it's an SUV. But I would say best practice is just type in SUV. So SUV is not in this list, but it is a free form text. It allows you to type in whatever you want to, uh, four door, uh, whatever you want to type into, and it'll accept it and it will store it. So you don't have to use just what's in that list. You can put whatever in there. But let me get, get more realistic. We'll do a fifth wheel. Brand, we'll do a uh, Alpen light. A model 32 RK. Uh, trade um, has customer says it has some gel code issues or fiberglass issues. As um, whatever whatever comments you wish to make about the trade, obviously at this point you haven't seen the trade. You're just asking the customer um, questions about them. And down here, uh, this I do apologize. You can't see it. Uh, well, you may be able to see it barely. It's just my screen resolution, but at the very bottom of the opportunity, you have the comments field. And this is where I would type in, uh, wife does not want a wet bath. They want a gen prep. They want um, a 50 amp service, whatever the customer wants. Uh, the criteria, and again, the comments are a work in progress. It will change as you're working the customer. And, um, um, and again, any single word in comments is searchable. So again, once you have that filled out, 
and I'm actually going to uh, uh, give this to uh, uh, Brianna right now because I want I want you to show it's in her thing. So I'm going to reassign it to her. Uh, actually, I have to hit save first. And actually, that's a note I need to say. He who creates it owns it. So if this contact was in the system because you searched your entire company when you search for him, and let's say that he's at another store. Well, you would not be able to see uh, his any uh, opportunities created at the other store if there were any. Uh, currently, you can see comments, and we are working on that that you can't see. But if this co the customer was owned by John at, at, at uh, location A, and this customer came down to location B and talked to Susan, and Susan found this customer, when Susan added an opportunity, Susan's name would be here. It's kind of the theory, he who creates it owns it. So the contact could be owned by John, but the customer's at, uh, at location B now, not location A anymore. And location B found him, uh, and they start talking, and the customer says, I want this or that. When she uh, hits add in the contact screen that she found, when she or whoever hits add opportunity, the default owner of that opportunity is the current person logged on. So again, he who creates it owns it. So let me go ahead and rechange this to, well, I'll give it my name. Um, well, no, I want it her name. So let me go ahead and, because I want to show you how it hits her, her files and so forth. So let me go ahead and reassign it to Brianna real quick. Oh, no, another note by doing that, uh, this reassignment that you're seeing me doing, anybody at the dealerships can do this. Now, don't, don't panic. You can only give it. So if you're the owner of it and you want to give it to somebody, you want to give the contact to somebody, you're the owner and you want to give it, you can give it. You can't take it. If you find a contact out there and it's owned by John and you say, I want that contact, you can't do that. You, you, but you can give it away. So I want to kind of say it there. So I'm going to go ahead and type in a couple letters there. And there she is. Actually, let me make darn sure I'm at the right one. And B R Y N N. Yes, I do. So, uh, a couple things, just so you know, uh, as a tidbit, anytime a contact is reassigned, an email uh, would be uh, sent to the person uh, getting it and the person losing it. And here, do you want it to reassign all activities? Uh, again, to reassign the contact, you probably would, but bottom line, you can say yes or no. I'm going to say yes. And so, in a couple seconds, that is now owned by Brianna. And I go to here. I want to reassign the opportunity the same way. And again, I'm just doing this because I want you to see how this affects her home screen, the stuff that we're doing. And click OK. And yep. And refresh. Save. Wow, I've definitely got my cut made out. One more time. E A. Search. Find the contact. Oh, be little. I won't be little. Um. Search. Um. Got to go the whole routine. Cancel, cancel. Reassign. Thank you. B R Y or B R. I'll leave those two there. And there she is. Oh, B R I. And click OK. Sure. 
Alrighty. I again, that would should work, and uh, it, as you've seen, it didn't. But that should reassign it to whoever we're talking about. Okay. So, kind of a recap, or, or just kind of back up to what we did. So we were at our home screen. We talked to these customers. We did our thing, whatever. And now it's time to put in the system. And that may be when the customer's there, or maybe after the customer's left. But whenever you are going to put them in the system, you go to contacts. You make sure that's flagged all, 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 and then you search for the contact. If you find the contact, then you double click on them. If you don't find the contact, you click on action, open contact, and that will open up the contact screen. You fill in the contact screen as you need to. Once you have that, you hit save. Then you click on add opportunity. That will bring up this screen right here, and then you fill this out to your heart's content. Uh, so it's all accurate. And then last but not least, uh, you're doing this, they didn't buy. So you then this is when you create your follow ups. So first off, I would just hop over here to open activities and look what's there and uh, see what open activities are sitting there. So there's none sitting there. So let's go ahead and create a phone call follow up. And. And again, if you notice, this is now assigned to Brianna. So subject. Call cust. And again, I would use very um, hyperglyphics up here. This is a note to yourself why you're calling the customer. And then the customer says call later today. Again, I would put 5 p.m., call them before the end of the day, and just hit save. So you recorded who they are in the contact screen, you recorded what they are, what want in the opportunity screen and you schedule a follow-up. That, in my opinion, is what they call a CRM admin, or sorry, a CRM entry. So you close all these, and now when she goes back to, did I pick the right person? It's B-R-Y-M. All right, we'll see you in a second. And, There is our area group um, as a contact. If I kind of drag the mouse over a little bit, I'll see that I did create an opportunity because I see the travel trailer I have him interested in. Uh, he's not over here because I was not able to reassign him to Brianna, so I will work on that. Um, and then that phone call follow up um, is right here. And if I open that up, it's due today, and that is my phone call with our a group. So the thinking is that once you create the customer at 11 o'clock, you put all this in, forget them, now go to your next customer. And then just keep mindful of the stuff due today because whatever is in this box, you want to do it before the uh, end of the day um, and then call the customer. So uh, this is billing, again, your contacts is not your, is not a uh, uh, up log, but if you sort it, it's always going to put the latest people on top down to the other people. So it's kind of like an uplog, and so to speak, uh, you can see what your customers uh, work for. A couple other utility items before I get out of here is that like this contact screen, you're only seeing one, two, three, five columns. If you want to see more information without scrolling back and forth, you can use the maximize button. So I'm clicking on that button right there, and that will maximize it. So I'm, I don't have to scroll quite as much to see the information back and forth. And then to go back, I just hit the double windows now and that returns me. So any of these, I call them quadrants, any of these quadrants, click on the maximize button that opens it up to see more data, then click on the two uh, arrows to restore it back to where it was. Now, if I want to a shortcut, I wanna go from here to my opportunities, I don't wanna go, I don't wanna click, click and go to opportunities, which is not that many clicks, but you don't want to do it that way. This is a shortcut. If you click on this shortcut, this will actually take you to the opportunity manager and dump you right in there. And then you do whatever you need to do, and then you can return back to the home manager. So that's kind of a, a navigation type tip, so to speak. Um, so the uh, first three items on my list were creating contacts and opportunities and what is searchable. So that's how you create a contact. That's how you create an opportunity. And again, I will send this to uh, 
that um, um, uh, this page to uh, Dwayne and he can distribute it to the uh, whoever's appropriate to distribute it to and every one of these fields are searchable. OK, I said all that. Let's go ahead and uh, search. So I'm going to go to my home screen because um, that's who that, that opportunity was saved in. So here is our inner group. I just want to kind of show you how it's saved. So I put in a CTT 525RK. So again, imagine there's 150 opportunities here. And you say, you know what? I want to see all my couples trailers. So you type in CTT. You hit search. Boom. You just see the one because I only have one that's CTT. And be mindful, I'm going to type in um, CYT. Or actually, I'm going to type in couples trailer. And hit search and I won't find anything because I never typed in couples trailer in opportunity. I typed in CTT. So basically the moral of the story there is um, um, garbage in, garbage out. Put good information in, you'll get good information out. Um, actually, let me go back to Brianna. I'm trying, I know I'm butchering that name and I apologize. Um, she's got like uh, retreat here. You see that on this one here. So she's got 150 opportunities here, and she typed in a, a Keystone retreat here, and she says, I want to find all my customers that want that. I'm oh, sorry, I have one in. I want to see all the customers I'm working on that. And she hits this, and bam, she's seen all the retreat. Let's go ahead and open that up and see what else she's got in here. Um, Wait for it. She has um, a destination trailer there. So let me go back here again. And I type in des tent. And actually, you don't even have to type in everything. If I type in just a few letters of it, it will find it. And to show you that I'm not cheating, I'll spell that with D E S S I N T. So it shouldn't find anything because no one there the, the word D E S S T I N is not in there. So if I hit search, I should find nothing. So I just kind of basically trying to prove to you that. It is searching those fields. Um, if she types in. Um, double click, come on, open up. If she types in. Um, well, that's all she has in this one. Oh, here you go. Uh, 39 FKSS. I'll forget that. So. Go back. If she has a. 150 opportunities here, or you have 150 opportunities here, and you say, show me all the ones that want a 39, uh, 39, I'm working on a 39 FKS, and that can be in the interested in, or that could have been in the opportunity name. But again, she'll find all the customers very quickly um, what they want. This. So the um, this that I'm sending uh, um, Dwayne is letting you know which ones they are, and the way to access them or search for them is use the contain search button down here. Go for a smoke, Chris. <laughs> so before I go any farther, I want to just quickly check. Is there any questions on how to search? OK, um, one of the items on my list is the uh, opportunity or sorry, the desktop. Again, hopefully you saw it. I will send the recording of it, but this to me is pretty much everything you do. You you want to see your follow ups. You want to see your open leads. You want to see your uh, sales opportunities and you want to see your contacts. And um, if you want them in different spots, you don't like that organization, then just move them to different spots. Uh, just make sure you hit the save button. So I want this one up here. I'll try to move it up there. There you go. I want it up there. If you want that change, just hit save. So however you want to see your data, uh, you create different uh, views of your data within the four home managers. Give it a name that means something to you. Once you've given it a name, you mean something to, to you. Come back here uh, and then add them. They will all be sitting here. Everything you see here is coming from the activity manager, the lead manager, the opportunity manager, or the contact manager. 
you create anything in any of those managers, it's going to be sitting here and then you can add it uh, by selecting it. And then clicking on add. And then now it's part of your view when you come in and have your copy in the morning, so to speak. Um, one of the things I have in here is the operating how to work your tasks and opportunities. Well, hopefully. Uh, this is how you work your task opportunity. You want that bucket to be empty. Now here, this is going to be uh, subjective. So work with your sales managers on what I'm fixing to say, but I would not have any. Um, web, most web leads, 99% of web leads, I'm fairly certain that all the people I've talked to, uh, you can ascertain if they are an opportunity or they're just totally fluff. Uh, one big one is that if some for some reason somebody goes on a website and they put in bad phone numbers, bad email addresses, and they hit submit, why people do that? I have no idea. But if they did that, and you try to call those, uh, let's just argue that um, Millie did that. So Millie sends in a every, all the information is bad, and you try to contact her, it's all bad. Well, as soon as you find that out, to me, I would hit disqualify. And then she's off your open lead list and you don't need to contact her. And when you do disqualify, it actually gives you as a reason uh, why you did it. And in that instance, cannot contact. Now I'm not going to disqualify, so I'll hit cancel. Uh, the other side of that coin is that most of the customers. So if you decide, I uh, apologize, I got to hit it myself. If you decide, Millie, you contact her and she just wanted a brochure, there is no opportunity whatsoever. I would actually still qualify her. And so she's a contact in your database, but hopefully you can see in the lower left hand corner, I would uncheck create new opportunity. Now, again, what I'm saying right now is a suggestion, a best practice. Uh, if you want to create opportunities for people that you don't think are going to buy, then go for it if, if you can. Uh, if you say, well, at least they sent in a lead, so they must be wanting something. Totally valid argument. Uh, so I'm just. It, Sales is subjective. What do you want to see in here? Uh, if they just flat out wanted to preserve, preserve. If they wanted just a brochure, I think I would create a contact, no opportunity, but then I would flag a follow up with that contact in six months saying, hey, six months ago you sent a lead in and you said you're getting a brochure. Um, anything developing? Are you thinking about buying one? And she says, no, we're still looking. Then I would schedule another follow up six months. I wouldn't create an opportunity until she says, yep. We're in the market uh, because you don't have to have an opportunity to create a follow up. That's just me. Uh, that's totally up to you. But bottom line is if Millie, I'm going to hit cancel here. Do you want to cancel? Yes. If Millie sent this in, she sent it in. And that's profound. Uh, she, she sent it in on this unit here. When you contact her, um, I would want her in contact the database and the benefit of creating her as a contact is if Millie three months from now sends in another web lead using this email address, you will be the owner of that lead immediately. So let's just argue that Millie three months, you create a contact, you, you qualify her and create her contact, but it's a brochure and you contact her and that's all she wants. She doesn't want to buy. She's not in the market. She just wanted a brochure. Uh, and so you create a contact, no opportunity. And then three months later, she sends another web lead in that web lead would be automatically assigned to you at two o'clock in the morning, whenever she fills it out. Um, and if you don't create another contact, if you don't create her in contact, you don't qualify, you leave it as a lead, then uh, it could be assigned to somebody else. It might be assigned to you if your web manager is looking for that, but it could easily assign you to salesman B. So creating contacts for people with valid, good information that seem to be looking for stuff uh, is a good best practice. And the reason I say all of that is to say this, and you want to save changes now, is that you sh and I, whoever, whoever's on the call that does not agree with me, you can please let me know and I'll, I'll be glad to learn. But most salespeople can figure out if these people are somebody I want in my database because they might send in future leads within 24 hours very easily. And I would argue within eight hours and I would argue more within the hour. So 
All I'm saying is theoretically, nothing should be here older than one day. If within one day, you should either disqualify it because it's all bad or you qualify it because you want them in the contact. back. If you qualify it, it's either going to be here as a contact with a follow up or it's going to be here and here because you created a contact and an opportunity and a follow up. As I said that quickly, if you don't mind, I'll repeat myself again. So every lead that comes into your database you should, and I say the word should, your sales manager, he trumps me totally. Whatever he says is should is what you should do. But I'm just gonna use the word should. Uh, every lead that comes in, you should be able to ascertain within eight hours before 5 p.m. Uh, whether this information is bad, then disqualify it. If it's good information and you contact the customer and they just want a brochure, you qualify them, that creates a contact, and I would create a follow up. So in six months, two months, whatever you want to. So in six months, two months, it'll pop up in this window. If this, if they are presenting you with a sales opportunity, you would create a contact and opportunity and a follow up. So they would appear here as soon as you do it. They would appear here as soon as you do it, and they will appear here, whatever date you put in the follow up. And again, these four quad quadrants are covering all of it. Um, so your goal, if you if you adopted that theory of what I just said, is that this area would always be empty. The second you get it in, or take back, it would not, it would have nothing over to one day, and by 5 p.m. every day, it would be empty. You 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 took care of all your leads during the day. So let me pause there because um, we do have plenty of time, and I, but I want to be cognizant of your time. We if we can get done early, then that's fine with me too. Does anybody have a fundamental disagreement of how I'm saying to treat web leads? Okay. Um, again, I will. Th this will be a recording, and uh, we'll kind of go from there. Uh, the next thing that I have is um, how to search for inventory uh, efficiently. A brand and type. So, and then how to run inventory reports. Let me go in the home screen. If you click on the steering wheel, um, this is going to bring up your inventory. So, this is how to search your inventory. So, it comes up, I'd hit maximize, and you see different columns here based on your security. But, like my security, I see these columns. And maybe these columns are not, I don't want to see them. I don't need to see them. So right now, let's say there's 15 columns sitting here. I'm going to right click on a column header. It doesn't matter which column header. These are called column headers where the manufacturer, the word manufacturer, brand and model are. Uh, that's the call a column header. I'm going to right click on the column header. That'll bring up a little sub menu. And I'm going to click on hide show. And if the box is checked, I'm seeing that information currently. If it's not checked, I'm not seeing it. So if I was a salesman, I don't care about the flooring company. I don't care about the flooring maturity date. Um, I might leave web priest and those two prices in there. Uh, I might leave exterior color in there. I'm gonna go down, stage and age are good. Chassis number, eh, I don't need that. Or maybe you do. I'll click it there, say you do. Uh, customer name, deal number, deposit, flooring number again. So hopefully you're seeing all I'm doing is kind of taking the elevator down and looking at the different information and feel free to play with it. Take a look at something and then uh, decide whether you want it or not. So boom, I'm happy. Uh, so I've added some fields there, took some fields away. And now this is called a custom view. The default view didn't have those things. So you have to give it a name. So again, I would just type in Mark. So the custom view I just created is called Mark. And if I ever want to see the default view with a flooring company and so forth, I just come here, hit default. And now I see all the fields that were there before. So let's go back to Mark view. So I like what I see. Now you guys have different size monitors. So it's not always fun to go like this back and forth. So you can resize your um, column. So I'm moving my mouse to where it double heads. And I'm going to drag it over a little bit. And now I see more of the right hand side. I'm going to put my mouse here, drag it over a little bit. 
And all I'm trying to do is fit all my columns into one viewable grid so I don't have to use that um, thing at the bottom to scroll back and forth. But if you change things, make sure you hit save. And now that's saved there. And you can actually move fields to, uh, say you want to move designation to the left of location. I'm going to left click and hold and move it over here. And now designation is over here. So that's just kind of how to set it up. Now I'm going to get to how to search for it. Uh, the easiest way to search for it is filtering. I want to see all travel traders. And guys, by the way, get used to what you see. So TH is toy hauler, TTBH is bunkhouse, TTH is toy travel trailer, toy house. I would assume a, a, a toy house. Huh, I don't know what TTH is. Learn your codes, whatever your codes may be. So filter, I want to see all travel traders. So you do the TT. I want to see the, the oldest one. I click on age. And back and forth, as you see me doing other grids. Um, no, I just want to see Forest River. So go ahead and hit go to manufacturer. These little drop downs are filters. So you click on Forest River and now you just see Forest River. I want to see the year order. Click on year. So searching your inventory uh, efficiently is by filtering. I want to sort it by brand. So I group all my Rockwoods, all my Vibes, all my Wildwoods together. Um, you cannot save a sort view. You can only save a column size and column content uh, view. Uh, so it'd be nice if you could hit a view name Forest River, but you, it doesn't do that. Um, so that is the easiest way to um, sort your inventory. And um, any questions on inventory or, or finding inventory? You want to find only used. So you click the drop down. I only want to see used travel trailers that are Forest River. Or I want to search my consignments. It's the only bad thing about conference calls when everybody's mic is muted. You're not totally sure if they're there or not. And you might have been talking to the wind for the last two hours. Um, any questions? I've actually um, run out of that is the sale. Is there anything that you salespeople do that I have not covered? Hi there. Hello. I'm here. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Just wondering about sold and sold available and okay. available units. And like what you just showed us is Mill Bay inventory. So if we're wanting to see inventory um, from company wide, how do we do that? And I am sorry. I did not show that to you. So again, we had the mark view, which is going to default over here. And I wish you could pick locations, but either you pick one or all. So currently we're seeing MBY, but if I hit this, I change it to all and I hit search again, then I'm going to see all inventory. Now, what you're seeing all inventory, so if MBY had 155, I think, and all is 701, but after that, you can either sort it, or if you want to see what CNY has in stock, then you hit one at a time. So you're seeing all inventory, but I want to filter my results right now by CNY, and I want to filter it by um, Forest River. So right now, and I want to sort it by use. So, so this way, CNI has three Forest Rivers, and that you can actually go down the line and go to MBO or NMO. They've got two. Uh, PBL has one. And then you obviously go back to company, just click on all, and you see the entire company who has used Forest Rivers. So I apologize, I should have shown that. Just select the all location in the lower left hand side. Any other questions? And again, is there anything you're doing or want to do that I haven't shown?
So is it possible to see how we see sold and available? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's right over here under status. If you want to see all, we have five statuses. A, available, SA, sold available, O, on order, SO, sold on order, and final sold. So in this instance, if you want to see the SAs, there you go. Awesome. It's all about filtering. The, the, pro, the, the beauty of this versus the paper, the paper is nice because obviously it's portable. You can take it with you and go wherever you want to. Uh, but the problem with paper, as much as you all sell, it's out of date very quickly. Whereas theoretically, if everyone's capping sales properly and, and doing their deals properly and doing them, doing them on a timely basis, what you're looking at here is accurate 24 hours, seven, 24, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So those were two very relevant questions to our conversation. Does, again, anybody else have anything else that I have not covered? Hey, Mark, maybe you could show them, show everybody how to print that report. It's most, some, new, some know, some don't. So okay. how to print an inventory report for their beginning of their day. Okay, so I'm gonna minimize here, Em. Sorry, keeping in mind that most don't have Excel, so the non Excel way to do it. OK, uh, so you would stay in your sales module. By the way, if no one's ever said it up here, if you don't, don't mind my, my don't mind me regressing for a second, uh, as far as navigation, if you click on the spark plug, you're in the parts module. If you click on the service sync, uh, service wrenches, you're in the uh, service module. These are called modules up here. So in the sales module, you have these functions down in the lower left hand corner. So the default function is sales, and that's the items that I have security to. You would have something different than that. If I click on the finance function, again, this is the stuff that I have security, you may be different. So modules, functions, and the task within the selected function. So she just brought up reports. So I'm gonna go down to, I'm gonna stay in sales, but I'm going to the sales reports. and. She said inventory reports, you have all three of them here. So it really doesn't matter which one you click on, and I'll show you why I say that. I'll click on run unit inventory reports. And it is coming up. So I clicked on run inventory reports, so it took me to inventory reports, but I could just, just as easily now navigate to sales reports. Give it a couple seconds, it'll refresh. So whatever, you select here, it will default to. So let me go back to inventory because that's when we selected. And then uh, drag up a little bit. Now you can search or you can use the draw arrow. So I'm going to go down and print inventory report by designation. So bottom line, again, you will have different reports here depending on your security. So inventory report by designation. So if I leave it MBY, then I'll just see MBYs. If I change it to an asterisk, I'll see O. And so I'm going to leave it MBY for right now. The default is preview in this lower right hand corner. So when I hit print, it's going to do a preview. It's not going to print it. So I hit preview or print, which will give me a preview. And in five, four, three, two, one, it comes up. Uh, you can use this to, if you want to look at it before you print it. And uh, this is your inventory, what the status is, what the top is, when you got it in. And uh, I hit the printer icon. And then whatever printer you have associated with your PC or laptop. Um, will come up and there you go. So you would select your printer, which I'm assuming your printer would just pop in there automatically. I, there, this server, the, I'm, on, I'm on your server and it has no uh, printers attached to it. So this is the default printer evidently. Your printer, your default printer would be HP LaserJet or whatever. And then you would bring it up and then you would just hit print at the bottom. 
and you would hit print at the bottom. Come on, baby. Oh, right there. Uh, you would hit print. Uh, so that's one report. Now, play with the reports a little bit, the ones that are available to you. And I'm trying to close it. Oh, there's the X. And I'm closing it. Um, so again, let's say there's 50 reports here and you don't want to search and, and drag every time that you come in here. So when you find a report that you like, so say that's one you like, see how this show favorites is, is grayed out. I'm going to right click on this report because I found out I liked it. I click on add and now it's in your favorites. So from now on out, when you go to any option that says run sales reports, run finance reports, run unit reports, I don't care which one you use, whichever one you have security to. When you click on that, instead of looking at the reports, instead of worrying about the modules, just click on show favorites and it'll show you the report that you found that you like. So it's a very good, we probably have 350 reports in our system, but more than likely you probably will only run one or two or three. So when you find what you like, uh, right click on it, make it a favorite, and um, and that's easy to find. You don't have to search anywhere. Let me do a couple others here. Um, they're all going to be under print. Oh, I'm in sales. You go to inventory. And refresh, thank you. Um, inventory by types and prices. Again, I'll just leave the uh, print prompts as default, hit print. So they all print the same way. Give you a preview first, then hit the printer icon. And here you have inventory description, serial number, chassis number, location, status, list price, and the type of the unit. Um, and here in this actually is showing you both things that are A and SA. Can I just ask you if that report has changed a little bit from the beginning? Because at the very beginning, we could barely read it because it was printed so light and it was printed so small. Um, okay. It looks really good now, um, but at our location, because none of us have Excel, um, you know, Kent is stuck, you know, printing reports for us every day. Okay. Uh, actually, there's two different ways. So if you use, um, if you run this report, leave it here, you hit print, it shows you the preview, and then you print from that preview, it prints in a, a format which you are 100% correct. Uh, it, it's crystal, crystal, uh, crystal reports, which I find too small. If you change the printer down here to default printer, you are not going to get a preview. It's actually going to go right to your printer, and it's in a much larger font. So when you get a chance, uh, let me, if, when you first open a report up, it's always going to say print preview. And then you hit print, it previews it, and then you hit that printer icon, it will print, it will print the crystal reports version of that report. So and I would do that first, make sure you like what you see. You like what you see, then I would cancel, then I would come back here and select the default printer. And when you print here using the default printer, it's going to go right to your default printer, whatever that may be, but it is in a much larger font that I find easy to read. Okay, so that's great. And one of the other questions that I had when we were told about this program initially, we were told that um, it would be able to track our commission. And so I don't know if it, if the companies, if we've gotten that far, that a salesperson would be able to look in after they've sold something to find out what their commission is. Um, actually, I shouldn't have closed that. We'll reopen it again, and I'll leave it sales and. I will put in here. Um, um, the 1st of March. And hit preview. And yep, they're right there. I think we can close. That. I'm not sure who needs to see what so. <laughs> But yes, this will be this will be the report that you'll be looking for. Yeah, that's great. Thank you very much. Yep, yep. I apologize about closing that quick, but maybe I shouldn't have shown that. So 
I closed it that quick. Um, is it? Are you Katrina? Sorry. Uh, who are you? My name is Debbie Hartz. Okay, right, there you go. Um, I thought I recognized the voice. Sorry. Any um, anything else? Question wise. Uh, Mark, hi. My name is Lucas, and uh, I'll apologize in advance because I I know you've covered this partially, from what I can tell, at least. I um. I was kind of getting my little guy ready for the day uh, and listening in, but uh, I understand that you can't, you know, if there's a contact already in the system, so they've been at another dealership, they come into my store, I find them. I understand that I can't take ownership of that. It can be given to me, but I can't take it. But if I go ahead and create an opportunity with that contact that's already there, um, uh, which I have done, um, I've noticed that I can't, create tasks for myself on that contact because I don't own it. Is there a way yes. to getting around that or? Yes. And roles. I believe it's 25. I'm not sure. And one day I'll have a good memory. What we've been restricting is what you can see. 1019, I wasn't even close. Um, so this is the roles assigned to all of them. Activities. Um, I tell you what, I'm going to set myself up as a um, um, if you can, and notepad, ah, there we go. If you would uh, write down this, well, you can see Dwayne for it too, but uh, send me an email with your name on it. And actually, anybody in this call, um, if you want to, send me an email. You specifically, um, I'm going to test that. I'm going to log on as a salesman, and whatever that is, I will correct, um, and then I will send you an email saying try it now. Okay, yeah, that's great. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you should. When any again, it's he who creates it owns it. So you see a contact. I don't care who owns it. I don't care what store owns it. The other stores should be able to create uh, opportunities and, con and activities from that. Um, and they would just be under their name instead of the contact. The contact ownership is truly not that important until you really sell the unit. Once you sell it, most people, uh, if, if you have a customer already to group, he's owned by a salesman at sell store A, and he has sold a, a unit from store B, at the time of sale, it, the common practice is to reassign him to the st salesman at, at store B because he sold them. Um, and then, of course, at that point, so realize contact ownership is not really needed until actually post sale follow up. Um, because if you create something, you should be able to own it. And whatever that issue is, I'm going to log on as a salesperson. And when he sends me an email, I'm going to correct it. And I will CC Dwayne on that. I don't see him on this call, but I'll CC Dwayne saying, hey, I fixed it to where salespeople can create uh, activities from contacts they don't own. Um, OK, great. Thank you. Yep, yep. So just send me an email so I know who you are and I'll, I'll fix it. Um, does anybody have? I have one more question. Sure. Um, in this area here for our um, uh, anything that we schedule for today as a follow up yep. and it has to be done by the end of the day, it seems to disappear. So are you only having to modify the date? Because let's say you have a day where uh, you were going to follow up with someone on Saturday, but you were at the trade show and you didn't follow up with them, but you want to do that. You want to check anything that you missed or were unable to get to. Um, how do you do that? OK, let's go ahead and change this to. Um um well actually let me go back to my view it'd be easier 
That way I won't mess up Brianna. So I'm going to go to activities. And I'm going to create. Ah, let me go real quickly to RE. So sorry about this going back and forth. I keep changing my mind what I'm going to do. So degroot, there's degroot. OK. And now I'm going to create a follow up. For Mr. DeGroot, I'll just do a phone call. That's simple. Um, and I'll do it for today, and then I will address your question. So I see it here. I put in 1700 and save. OK, and oops, that's a sign of Brianna. Thank you. OK, so I assign that to myself. So X, X and go to activities. So if I go to activities, I should see one fall from Ari. Let me hit refresh. Now I don't get it done today. Uh, so let me change that date to the 16th for yesterday. And I think that's going to be answering your question, because if I do that and I hit save. I won't see it, and that's because due the next seven days. So the filter should be due Actually, this should be the filter. Um, if you change it to this, if you miss a follow up. Um, what happened to Ari? As I stutter here for a second, hold on one second. In case of 16th. Eh. 17th. This is. OK, that's my Ari phone call. Um. OK, let me do that again. I think I was right. I just didn't realize it. So you create a follow up. And you want to see if you do today. I don't see this follow up because it's not due today. It was due yesterday or I forgot to do it. So if I change that to do more than one day. Which would include and there is my follow up. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Huh? No, see, it's not showing it's bypassing the one day. So let me change that to. Actually. Next from. Actually, what I would do is you have due today. And that's showing all your follow up due today. So that's following suit what the definition is. But if you ever say, OK, what did, did I miss anything? Just change that to blank and hit search. And that's going to show you all your follow ups, including the one to Ari uh, that you have due. So these are due no matter what day was put in there. So that would be a best practice. I would use that way. See your things for today. But if you want to check, did I miss anything? Then come in here and change it due. Just make sure the time frames nothing hit search, and you'll see all the follow ups that are due. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Again, these are filters, and it's going to take some playing with that uh, to learn how do you use it to your benefit. All righty. Um, again, anything I haven't shown. Um, that you do. Drum roll.
All righty. Uh, well, uh, if there is no more questions, I um, I have run through all the items that I was uh, given to go over with y'all. And um, hopefully somebody captured my email address. If you didn't uh, get a hold of Dwayne and say, hey, what's the name of that guy? Or what's the email address of uh, Mark that uh, gave that seminar? I got I forgot. I didn't ha I'd think about this question while, while he was on the phone. Uh, email it to me. Um, I like talking about process questions. It's kind of fun because uh, it's all about processes. The reason we put data in the system is that you want to get data out of the system. So play with it and um, and hopefully this having your data organized this way will, will make you money. Um, I have another question. All right, good. Um, I'm ho I'm hoping that we can get a copy of this recording because um, there are some things that I definitely would like to go over. OK. And then uh, what was my other question? I have one more. Um, I'll think about it for a second. OK, well, it takes it takes a bit. I'm not sure how long it is, but after I hit leave record, <coughs> excuse me. After I hit stop recording, it takes a little while to render or whatever it does. But I will send that to uh, uh, right now. My time is 238, so I should definitely have the recording by 438 at the latest. So uh, my time, Eastern time. So I will email it to Dwayne and then just email Dwayne and say, hey, that guy from IDS send you the recording. And if he says yes, then he can forward it to you or whoever he wants to. All righty. I, um, again, I want to give all the opportunity I possibly can. Y'all are kind of fun to deal with. I enjoy it. Thank you. All righty. Y'all take care. Thank you, Mark. Lucas here again. I did send you that email. So, yeah, once again, thanks for the help and all the info. Appreciate it. You got it. I'll have that to answer for you shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank um, you. Mark, it's Sean here. Uh, have we got all the finance managers on still? Yeah, I wonder if it might be worth having the finance manager sit with you for a little bit because we still got some time booked off. That's fine uh, with me. Yeah, to have the finance manager sit in and go through any questions that they have relevant to their role and okay. the responsibilities in the program. I am again, I'll stay in this account. I will go to finance and I'll manage finance codes. And open it up for any questions. OK, uh, ambassadors, thank you. Branch managers and uh, finance managers, if you can stay on and let me know who's here, please. I'm here, Sean. This is Anita. Thank you. I'm here, Sean. It's Blaine. Just, hold on just one 